Hello learners! Today we will learn how to find the LCM, or least common multiple, and the LCD, least common denominator. You will find that they are very much related. Sometimes when using these initials, it gets confusing, like whether or not you're supposed to actually find the LCM or the GCF. To help avoid this confusion, it's good to look at the meaning of the actual word. So here we have the word least, and we know that that means the smallest, and the word common means the same. Now we're going to look at the words multiple and denominator. Like I said previously, the least common multiple and the least common denominator are related because you're actually finding the same information. It's just when you're looking for a multiple, you're only comparing the two numbers, 2 and 5. But when you're looking at the least common denominator, you're changing the denominators. We're going to begin by finding the least common multiple of the numbers 2 and 5. And like any good mathematician, I am going to use a chart to help organize my information. Now you may remember that a multiple is what you get when you multiply a number, such as 2, by another factor. And if you want to find sequential multiples, like we do, then it's going to look a lot like skip counting. So because I'm looking for the least common multiple, I'm going to begin by multiplying 2 by the number 1 to get my first multiple of 2. And then I'm going to follow in sequence and multiply it by the factor of 2 to get my next multiple of 4. I'm going to continue until I've listed at least 5 to 10 multiples in order. See, it looks a lot like skip counting, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now I'm going to move on to my next number, 5, and I'm going to do the same thing, following in sequence. And I'm going to get 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Now, in order to move on to the next part, I'm going to look for the ones that they have in common. And there's only one multiple that both of these two numbers have in common so far, although the word multiple can be simulated with the word many, and it will go on, and there will be thousands of multiples if I continue. However, luckily, I'm only looking for the least common multiple. So once I identify the multiples, I can circle them. And if there are more than one, I'm going to choose the smallest one. Lucky for me, there's only one. So the least common multiple of the numbers 2 and 5 is 10. I'm going to use that same process to find the least common denominator. The only difference is I'm now talking about denominators. So if I were looking at the numbers or the fractions 1 half and 1 fifth, and I wanted to find the least common denominator, say, maybe to add or subtract the fractions, then I would follow the same process, but I would only pull out or extract the 2 and the 5. See where I'm going with this? Once I've listed the multiples and I found the least one that they have in common, I have just identified the least common denominator as well. The tricky part comes when I want to change the original fractions into new fractions that have the least common denominator as a denominator. In order to do that, I have to think about how I would get from 2 to 10 by multiplying. So I know that I would have to multiply 2 by 5 to get to 10. And I would have to multiply 5 by 2 to get to 10. Because I want these new fractions to be equivalent to my original fractions, because I can't change the value of them, then whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So I'm going to have to multiply my numerator by the same thing that I multiplied my denominator by. And if I turn those into fractions, we get something called the great one, because this new fraction that I'm multiplying by has a value of 1. Therefore, if I multiply straight across, 1 times 5 will give me a new numerator of 5, and 1 times 2 will give me a new numerator of 2. Therefore, I now have my two new fractions. You may have noticed that the least common multiple of 2 and 5 could be found by multiplying 2 times 5. The nice thing about multiples is that you're always going to find one because you can always multiply the two numbers together. It just might not be the least common multiple. For example, 
Let's take a look at these next two fractions. I want to find the least common denominator for 1 sixth and 5 sixteenths. First I'm going to create a new chart and I'm going to pull my two denominators into that chart. And then I'm going to list the first five multiples of the number 6, which takes me out to the number 30. Then I'm going to list the first five multiples of the number 16, which takes me out to the number 80. As you can see, I don't have any common multiples yet, so I'm going to have to continue. And I would start with the smaller number because there is a big gap here between 30 and 80, so I have a lot of multiples that I could fill in. So I'm going to extend the 6 out a few more places. As I do that, you'll see the number 48 pops out, and now I have my least common denominator. However, if I had just multiplied 6 by 16, I would have gotten a product of 96, which is a lot greater than the least common denominator, which is actually 48. Because we typically only find the least common denominator when changing fractions, we're going to do this here as well. So if I wanted to change the fraction 1 sixth into a new equivalent fraction that has 48 as a denominator, I have to think how would I get from 6 to 48? What factor can I multiply 6 by to get to 48? And that factor is 8. 6 times 8 equals 48. And because I need these new fractions to be equivalent, what I do to my denominator, I also have to do to my numerator. So if I multiply 1 times 8, I'm going to get my new numerator of 8. And I'm going to do the same thing down here with 5 sixteenths. So I have to think about how I would get from 16 to 48. And I can do that by multiplying 16 by 3. And what I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. And so my new numerator is going to be 15. This gives me my two new equivalent fractions that are ready to be added or subtracted. Now it's time to see what you can do on your own. So for this problem, you're going to find the least common multiple of the numbers 4 and 5. Pause the video while you solve this problem, and then restart the video when you're ready to see the answer. Go ahead. Are you ready to see the answer? After identifying the multiples, I can see that the smallest one they have in common is 20. Therefore, my least common multiple is 20. Let's try another one. This time, I want you to find the least common denominator of the fractions 2 sevenths and 1 fifth. Go ahead and pause the video while you solve this problem. Are you ready to see the answer? After identifying multiples, I can see that the least common multiple between 5 and 7 is actually 35. How did you do? I think you can handle a couple more. Now let's find the least common denominator between the fractions 1 3rd and 5 12 Pause the video while you do the math, and when you're ready to see the answer, unpause the video. Are you ready to see the answer? After identifying the first five multiples, I can see that the least common multiple is 12, giving me a least common denominator of 12. Now for your last challenge, you're going to change the fraction 2 sevenths to an equivalent fraction that has 35 as the denominator. Pause the video while you do the math, and then unpause the video when you're ready to see the answer. Are you ready to see the answer? Well, when I multiply 7 by 5 to get to 35, I have to do the same thing to my numerator, which is going to give me my new numerator of 10, giving me a new equivalent fraction of 10 35ths. In this video, we have learned how to find the least common multiple and the least common denominator.